most people don't understand how much injustice and hardship our people have endured already. And we haven't left. We're still here. The attempts to evacuate people, annihilate people, assimilate people, have been experiments that have somewhat failed, thank God. Our people have an intestinal fortitude that nobody else has because this is our country. You can't get us out of here. And the same is true of the river. We're always going to be, no matter what they do to the river, pollute it, dam it, change it, in many, many ways, no matter what they do, it's still our river. And I think people think that you have to have property rights to own something, but that's not the way the river is for us. We belong to this place, we belong to this river, we belong to these tributaries that our people had villages on, and that's never gonna change. The only thing that frightens me is not having the knowledge about those places and about those lifeways and about the technologies and the language that expresses all of that. That scares me. But the notion that we're ever going to be separable from this land, it's unfathomable to me. We learned to read. We learned to write. And we started learning how to write testimony, affidavits, documentation, and we learned to keep records. That became quite valuable in the years to come when we had to come back and fight for our standing, a thing called recognition. Isn't that amazing? We were here all these centuries, and then in our own land, we had to fight to be recognized as a people, a people who built highways on our trails, a people who built ports on our landing sites, a people who took our resources uh, for their own wealth building, and then tell us, we don't recognize you. You have to prove to us that you were ever here. The reason that we continue to do these things is I think an important thing is that we're honoring our ancestors. And um, as we do that, recognizing that things aren't stagnant, that things were always changing. As we do some of the traditional things, we actually incorporate more modern, um, contemporary kind of things. Like if we were making a basket, we might make something that's like a wallet or something like that. Or, something that's a little more contemporary and people can see a connection to it. This still has a use today, but you're still learning those traditional techniques of how you gather the cedar bark, for instance, and how you prep it, and um, all the things that go into um, before you even make a basket or make something with that material. Um, it's important that we share all of this to show that we still do this, that they won't have no misconceptions about who we are. And then as they get older, and if they continue to see us and hear us, they will know. It's amazing that um, you know people do see these as, as old ways of things. Why do we continue them today? But it's amazing how when we practice these traditional ways and things like that, people are recognizing that there's still a connection of importance to what's going on. Like here in the Willamette Valley, fire was very important to our tribes and how we maintained like the huckleberries and the oaks and the canvas areas 
and now fire is being re-looked at as an important management tool. Um, but that's something that our tribes did for from time immemorial using those traditional ways.